Eden Lifestyle, transforming lives. <coughs> Got a cough? Experts say it's the top reason people see a doctor. That's more than 30 million visits a year. Besides, not getting rid of a cough may cause other serious conditions. In this video, you will learn the role a cough plays in fighting disease. And by staying till the end, you would have learned our most potent and powerful remedy that will help you to get rid of a cough and even aid your body in fighting infectious agents. The ingredients are so simple, you may even be able to find them in your kitchen right now. Before I present this vital remedy, I would like to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We provide free health content like this regularly. And also remember to click the like button for the YouTube algorithm. We would really appreciate that. A cough is your body's way of responding when something irritates your throat or airways. Coughing isn't all bad. It helps clear mucus from your airways. If you or your child is otherwise healthy, there's usually no reason to suppress a cough. Coughing is a part of your body's first line of defense. The first line of defense includes physical and chemical barriers that defend the body from infection. These include your skin, tears, mucus, cilia, stomach acid, urine flow, ferny bacteria, and white blood cells called neutrophils. For instance, if an infectious agent enters through your nostrils, it will stick to the mucus lining of your respiratory tract. Your body then responds by secreting a chemical called histamine, which causes you to sneeze, cough, or tear up. Your body is only trying to propel the infection out before it gets lower down your respiratory tract. We want to work with our body and not against it. Many drugs for cold and flu are antihistamines, which prevents the body from defending you. It suppresses your cough without getting rid of the underlying problem, which is an infection. Instead, you want to help your body expel the invaders more effectively and kill the bacteria by natural remedies, therefore reducing the frequency and duration of a cough and getting rid of the cause, which is the infection. So what causes a cough? Virus. If you want good health, nature's law obey. All her precepts heed, never from them stray. Harmful habits shun, do not push yourself. When too tired or you may find, we'll put you on the shelf. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the halt and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. It's our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Take some time to play, stand straight, breathe in deep. Work while it is day, always get your sleep. Eat just what you need, never more or less. Moderation is the guide to health and happiness. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the halt and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. This our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Water is your friend, use within, without, cleanses, smooth and heals, put the germs to rout, rest repairs the rents, stress of living brings, loosens taut and ragged nerves and gives the spirit wings. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the halt and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. This our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Sunshine and fresh air, clean and wholesome food. Proper exercise, thoughts of right and good. Keep the cheeks aglow. 
body fit and strong. Keep the brain alert and clean and give the heart a song. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the heart and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. It's our goal, a body, whole and spirit, flesh and mind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. You are muted, Brother Hutchinson. You are muted. Yes, we are now called to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy men servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that was in thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord bless the Sabbath day and holiday. Eternal righteous God and Father, we are so excited and happy to be in your presence all around the world, Lord. We ask that you will come in our hearts and give us your Sabbath blessing and help us to be a blessing to you and your work, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We want to welcome you this morning. It is sunny outside, you know, and despite what I want to say that it is the Sabbath day, a day Amen. for us to come apart from everything and just rest in God. There is no greater rest than resting in God. So welcome once, welcome twice, welcome thrice in Jesus' name. We want to know where you're visiting us from. So at this time, put it in the chat. Where are you located? I'm in Syracuse, New York. It's sunny today. It's really cool. It's minus five degrees. Tell me, what's the weather like where you are at? I want to invite you to pay attention to the following service announcements. So right here on the platform, every Sabbath morning, if you haven't been joining us, I think you're missing out. I've missed out a few of these sessions as well, but I know that there are awesome sessions. Our healthy early morning presentations with Sister, um, I believe her name is Barbara. Uh, that happens every Sabbath morning at 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Then on Wednesdays, we have our prayer, praise, and testimony sessions. So you don't want to miss that. If you need to get recharged Wednesdays, that's the night to come out and get your recharge. Then we have our prayer and fasting which is happening January 15th. It started on the 12th. It's continuing on the 15th, the 19th and 26th, straight down from February 2nd to February 4th. And that we will be praying for family, friends. If you have a list, please bring that list. We want to pray on it. The number to call if you need additional prayer, if something the speaker for the hour says or something someone says touches your heart this morning, then we are inviting you to our prayer room. We have Bible counselors and prayer warriors waiting to pray with you, to talk with you. The number, if you need to call for additional prayer, that is 646 400 5720. So if you want additional prayer, raise your hand and someone will put you into the prayer room. But if you want to call in after, dial 646 400 5720. 
And then we want to talk about our Daniel's Health Challenge. Now, every year, if you haven't done so as yet, I'll tell you, um, you're missing out. People make plans to do all sorts of things at the beginning of the year. The Daniel's Health Challenge is going to be hosted by the Northeastern Conference, our very own Pastor Dr. Diona Ryan, Joshua Diona Ryan. And so more information is going to come regarding the Daniel's Health Challenge. And it starts on January 16th to the 25th. Then this afternoon, we have our series, Extending Your Life Naturally. That continues. And we have a special guest coming in from Meet Ministries, Dr. Thomas Jackson. He will be talking to you on naturally healing the mind, emotions, and the immune system. You do not want to miss it. So right now, while you're sharing this link to your friends and loved ones, yes, go ahead, share the link. You're going to share the link for this afternoon's program as well, because we all need a word from God. And I believe this message that he's going to bring to us is going to be really poignant to this day and age. Then finally, my brethren, my brothers, my sisters, my honorary guests looking at me on this platform. If you haven't been to Healing for a Hurting World, which happened last night, <coughs> then you missed out. You do not want to miss this series. It starts tonight at 7 p.m. What time did I say? That's right, 7 p.m. Dr. Monet St. Gist is going to break the bread for us today, but he's going to do so at 7 p.m. tonight once again. Um, at this time... Uh, on one, two, three, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Dr. St. Gist. One, two, three, one, two, three. How's my sound? Good. Coming through. It's coming through loud and clear, even on the main <laughs> platform. Um. So at this time... We're going to go straight into our opening again. song with Sister Debbie Jones, our opening song. Good morning, saints of God. It is such an honor and privilege to be in the land of the living this morning. And we are going to sing about our God, who is our great shelter, our refuge, our defender, our everything. So if you would turn with me in your hymnals or on your phones to hymn number 528, a shelter in the time of storm. And I do want you to sing with me while you remain muted. So I need to see some lips moving as we sing. Five, two, eight, a shelter in the time of storm. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand, faithful God. For the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. Verse 2, a shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foes affright, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand, faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. 
The raging floods may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We find in God a safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand. Faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. On the last verse, let's sing it heartily. O oh, rock divine, O oh, refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our help ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand. Faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. God bless. Amen, amen, amen. At this time, we want to go to our health nugget. And it is a little bit different. It's a video, but I wanted to introduce it because during this time of COVID and people suffering loss, we need to ex demonstrate empathy right but what is empathy so at this time the tech team is going to put up that video for us and i want you to pay attention because as christians if we want to walk after god then we want to definitely express or demonstrate empathy and i want to say welcome to Sister Jennifer, who is in Richfield, happy Sabbath. It's minus eight degrees out there while we wait on the tech team. Um, sister or brother KD is in Richmond, Virginia, happy Sabbath. Sister Debbie is in Indianapolis. It's 20 degrees and overcast. Um, sister Parker, welcome. She's in Woodbridge, Virginia, and it's 23 degrees. Then Sister Julietta, Welcome. She's out in Pennsylvania, minus six. Um, and then Sister Novlet is all the way up there in Canada. Woo! Minus 26 degrees Celsius. Ouch. I feel for you, Sister. Sister Daly is down there in Long Island. And it's cold down there as well. Um, if the tech team is having problems, then let's see. Maybe I can share my screen. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Actually, let's see. Okay, let's try this again. Because I do want to share the sound. Share sound. Um, I don't want to share all of it. Give me one second here. Let's Let's try this all over again. And oh, why is it awesome. very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's a, it, very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. <laughs> Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, and climb down. I know what it's like down here. And you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, <laughs> it's bad, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no, 
You want a sandwich? <laughs> um, empathy is a choice and it's a vulnerable choice because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time. Because you know what? Someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful, and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. Oh, at least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. <laughs> John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. Amen. Amen. So as you ponder on that, you know, put your thoughts, what's going through your mind now, put it in the chat, because I want to say that as Christians, we ought to be with individuals. We never ought to try to fix anyone because we know that's the work of the Holy Spirit, right? So I'm encouraging you today if you have never thought about empathy, consider showing someone empathy today. As we switch into our prayer time, I'm inviting individuals to put your prayer request in the chat. Sister Ramos is going to come. Just before she does, we'll turn our eyes towards heaven Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer as we go into our prayer time. Can I get that song? Sweet Sister Debbie. Okay. Let's Sister pray. Ramos. Let's pray, brother and sister. Let's pray. I was muted. But most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord and God. Thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful day, sunny day here in this part of the world, dear Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, dear Lord, to be together with our brothers and sisters on your holy Sabbath day, dear Lord. Thank you that 
even though we so the weather is so cold out, out there for some of us, we are blessed with so many things, you Lord. We have warm houses. We have a warm water coming down, dear Lord. We have everything we need, dear Lord. And a lot of time we take everything for granted, dear Lord. Thank you that we have our breath, uh, that we are able to breathe on our own this morning, dear Lord. So many people are not able to do that, dear Lord. At this time, we just wanted to thank you, dear Lord, for everything you have given us this far, for being with us for bringing us to this point, dear Lord. And we know that you will continue to be with us, to take us to, and to help us to be ready for your soon return, dear Lord. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the spirit of prophecy, dear Lord. Thank you for the health message. Thank you for everything around us, dear Lord. And at this time, I wanted to bring the Lord to, to your presence, Lord, our speaker for this day, the Lord, that you, thy Holy Spirit will speak to him or her, the Lord, and that you will open our ears that we will be able to hear and take it in, the Lord, and apply the changes into our lives where we still time, we still have time to do so, the Lord. And I also wanted to pray for all the prayer requests. I wasn't able to see them, the Lord, but Thank you for that Holy Spirit that you see everything and you record everything. So I pray for everyone that are sick, everyone that are mourning at this time. I pray for everyone that are discouraged at this time, the Lord, and for everyone that is suffering either way, the Lord. I pray for the ones that have lost their jobs and the ones that are still trying to find a job, the Lord. And I pray and that you will continue to be with us as we meet here together, dear Lord, in this beautiful platform. Thank you for the technology, dear Lord, that allows us to be together, even when we are far apart, dear Lord. And I thank you for this technology, dear Lord, that also brings blessings to every home, dear Lord, far and near, dear Lord. And I pray that Holy Spirit will be, will enter and continue to be in every home, that is represented here, the Lord, touching every family member, the Lord, and touching all of us and forgiving our sins and to help us to be humble enough, the Lord, to ask and to admit that we cannot do it on our own, the Lord. We need that, thy Holy Spirit, to be with us and, and that we allow you to take over and just, we just take the right, the Lord, and, and, uh, and be ready for you to take over our lives and be with us. Thank you once again for this opportunity, dear Lord, to be together on the Holy Sabbath day. And please continue to be with us. I say this humbly in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Ramos. You know, it is a pleasure to receive. We all love to receive, right? But how much do we love to give? And so at this time, I want to turn your attention to the ways that you can participate on this platform. I'm not just talking about financially. That would be great if you can donate funds towards our benevolence um, project. We have so many individuals among us who have lost work and we have individuals who are in need outside of our circles. And I want to encourage you to give towards that fund, whatever it is. The woman with the mic, she gave her last penny. Imagine that. And she was blessed. How much more is God waiting for you to bless you? 10 times over what you have now. Because to give, it's better to give than to receive. So I want to encourage you to, if, if the tech team can put up our flyer so that you can see how you can give. But let me tell you, 
I would love for you to give of your time and your talents. That's right, your time and your talents. We need individuals who can sing, pray, host, whatever it may be. Maybe you love to organize things. You're needed. And on the screen, you have the many ways that you can give to this platform. I want to encourage you to remember your tithe and your offering. You don't need to send it anywhere, send it here. We'll get it to where it needs to go. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for blessing us, not just with your presence, but with your time, talents, and your finances. So at this time, let's pray, which will be followed after we pray by our scripture reading. Brother Sean Williams is going to be doing our scripture reading. So I'm asking that you prepare yourself for that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us this week with health and strength that for those of us who had to go out to work, Lord, we were able to do so safely. You saw us go out and come in and we say thank you. Lord, you've blessed us with so many talents. I pray that you would touch hearts listening on this platform right now, that our cup will overflow with talents that will bring men and women, boys and girls to you, because we know you are soon to come. In a special way, Lord, I want to bless, ask a blessing on those who did not have to give, who do, on those who considered wanting to give, Lord, and then on those who gave. We pray that you will continue to fill their cups. You said a cattle on a thousand hills belong to you. If the birds don't have to worry, Lord, help us to trust you. Help us to put faith in you, to know that when we give, you will take care of us. We thank you for all the good gifts that you have blessed us with. And we pray that as we move forward in faith, you will continue to impress on our hearts to give of our time in service for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Brother Williams, the platform is now yours. You're muted. Still muted. Okay, can the tech team um, unmute him for us, please? There we go. Lord God, as I read your holy word, bless it and bless those listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. 
Amen. Psalms 91, 1 to 9. Amen. 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 And I want to introduce our speaker for the hour. He is no stranger to us. He is a young man who loves God. He has a family. He's he has one wife, one son, as far as I know, and he is our speaker for the Healing for a Hurting World series. I bring to you none other than Dr. Monet Sengist. He is going to break the bread, but before he does, we will be blessed with uh, item of song. Sister Debbie is going to sing for us at this time. And I'm waiting on the tech team to put up that video.
amen, amen. Dr. Sinjist, the time is now yours. Amen and praise the Lord. We are so grateful that you have joined us here this morning for our special service. And I pray that by God's grace that you were blessed tonight, last night. And even as we go throughout the course of today, I wanted to invite your friends as well to be a part of this great experience as we explore healing for a hurting world. And this morning we'll be talking about the cost of healthcare, the cost of healthcare. So I wanted to invite your friends and family members to be with us even, uh, even today, even right now, and also later on for the remainder of the program in the afternoon. So as we get into this topic for tonight, for today, for this morning, let us pray together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for all you've done. And I pray that you will continue to be with us, continue to guide us and protect us and help us, Lord, that even as we go throughout the course of this uh, presentation, we ask that your spirit will be with us and will guide us tremendously. For this, we ask that you will put your words in my mouth, we pray in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. amen. And amen. Praise God for that. Now, as we looked at previously in our, in our night before, our last night, we explore the importance of, uh, of the two important foundations, the two important foundation. Now, let me see in the chat, what is the first foundation that we looked at uh, last night? What is the first foundation that we looked at last night? So I wanted to be able to put that in the chat with us. We looked at two important foundations. Foundation number one, that's right. It is what? Our medical text is what? It is called the... The Bible, that's correct. We're going to be exploring the Bible. I hope you don't mind. We're going to be exploring the Bible, even right now. And also, another important foundation is that of, another important foundation is that of the what? Let, let's see here in the chat. That's correct. Good science. Yes, good science. So we're going to be going through these two important foundations as we explore this healing hope and restoration series. And I pray that by God's grace that you have been telling somebody, you have been telling your friends and family members, because my friends, we all need healing and we need hope in times like these, in these critical moments in earth's history, in a time where we experience in the worst uh, pandemic that we have ever seen. But this morning we'll be looking at the cost of healthcare, the cost of Healthcare. Now, as we go into this topic a little bit further, we're just going to do a little recap because we saw that last night. We saw in our last presentation, in our last presentation, that there will be wars and even rumors of wars. And as you notice here again, we know that we are living in a world where there's a lot of political unrest. There's military unrest happening in our societies. Also, the conflict between the United States and Russia, Ukraine. And Russia, we see that in, uh, in, in China and even Taiwan. There's so many, so much conflicts occurring in our world even now. And our medical textbook gave us insight by predicting that these things will occur. Also, we see the rise of domestic violence, the breakdown of the family structure in the home. We have seen so much happen in the times in which we now live. And some of you have grown up in probably quote unquote peaceful times. And you're probably saying that, oh, hi, why does my children have to go through such hard times on this planet? My friends, the, Bible, the word of God tells us this as we begin to look at this a little bit further. In Matthew 24, verse 3, as we recap from our last presentation, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came up to him privately saying, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus begins to explain to his disciples in Matthew 24, verse 4, Take heed that what that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive how many? Many, that's right. And he shall hear of what? Wars and rumors of wars. My friends, if you just turn on the news network, if you read the newspapers, you will notice very carefully that these are the exact things that are happening in our world in quick succession. For all these things must come to pass. The Bible here predicts, our medical textbook here predicts that these things must happen, that these things must come to pass. But look at this very carefully. But the end is what? is not yet for nation will rise up against nation kingdom will rise up against kingdom there shall be famines you know uh, even this week too as well you know we went to the supermarket and even in new jersey and new york 
where am I, you know, where, where I'm located right now. I know that there's many individuals joining us or will be seeing this video all around the world. And so therefore, I went into the supermarket and I saw the shelves were empty in certain parts of the, of the, uh, of the store, especially in the food section. And they're saying that they're having shortages because of uh, COVID-19 and for other various reasons, right? My friends, we are seeing, we are living in very critical moments and we have to get ready. We have to prepare our homes. And that's why you're must continue to invite people to come out to healing for a whole for a hurting world also the bible didn't only talk about famines but also pestilences and earthquakes in how many places in many places we looked at this in our last presentation and we we're just recapping really quickly so i hope that you're following me and what are pestilences that we looked at last night what are pestilences let us see in the chat what are pestilences whoever that's joining us on youtube or facebook what are pestilences in Zoom? Put it in the chat box. What are these? That's correct. These are diseases, plagues. The Bible predicted, our medical textbook predicted that there will be diseases and plagues in the last times in which we now live. And we are living in that very moment in Earth's history. Therefore, COVID, if you are a, a good Bible student, right? COVID should have not taken you by surprise. We should be preparing our homes and our families for this is not the only one. It will get worse and worse and worse. And when it gets worse, just go back to this video a few, probably a few short months, years from now, and you're going to see exactly what it is. Because my friends, we are living in that critical time. Also, not only COVID is impacting millions or even millions around the world and even the United States we have a list of the top 10 killers in America. Number one, we have heart disease, killing over 597,000 Americans every single year, cancer, chronic lower respiratory disease, stroke, accidents, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, nephritis, influenza pneumonia, and even intentional self-harm. These are the top 10 killers in the United States. And my friends, it is getting pretty bad right now. Also, we looked at previously that the World Health Organization had declared COVID-19 a pandemic back in March 11 of 2020. And this right here is a global plague that has impacted our entire planet. Economies have been shut down. People have lost their jobs. Lives have been lost. Are you following this? People have been impacted by this deadly virus in so many different ways that have brought sorrow and pain and suffering to this world. And that's why we are calling for healing for this hurting world. According to John Hopkins University in Medicine, they actually I took the statistic this morning. We estimated about 5.5 million people that have died from COVID-19 throughout the time of this pandemic. I know that families are hurting now and going through a ter terrible time due to death and the loss of loved ones and friends. So I just want to, we, we, we prayed for you last night. We're going to pray for you again this morning as well. For those that are going through very trying moments and trying times in this critical moment. Even then, we have over uh, 300 million uh, cases that have been identified, right, even around the world. Now, as we look at the cost of healthcare here this morning, you notice very carefully that Medicaid spending is going up. It's going up, right? And if you notice here again, that in the United States alone, back in 2014, we had spent about 475, and that is billion dollars in Medicaid spending, the cost of healthcare. Now, as you go throughout the years, you notice that this number increases year after year, it seems as if disease and sickness and the cost of healthcare is intensifying. Are you following this? It's intensifying and it's getting more and more dangerous the more we move throughout time. 2016, we reached about $553 billion in Medicaid spending, and that's just Medicaid. That's talking about other forms of. Uh, ways that people will spend for healthcare or private insurance or whatever that you're using, even out of pocket. My friends, that's just Medicaid spending. Look at this here again. And back in 2019, Medicaid spending grew 2.9% to hit about 613.5 
billion dollars in the United States. We're not even accounting for the world, right? We're not even accounting for the world and even for the uh, even for the global, uh, you know, thing that is taking place even right now, right? And so as a result of this, you notice very carefully that medical bills are the biggest cause of United States bankruptcies. And if you want to take that statistic around the world as well, yes, a lot of people have been spending quite a bit on medical expense and medical bills. My friends, the cost of healing, the cost of health care is rising more and more and more. And as you begin to notice this a little bit further, United States healthcare spending will reach about four trillion and have reached about four trillion in 2020, according to this article, right, that came out. Four trillion. I didn't know that number exists when I was a child, right? I, I didn't even know that number existed when I was a child. So it, it, just imagine four trillion dollars just in healthcare. Oh, the cost of healthcare is going up. If you notice here again, where is a lot of that money going? It's going in on the, in, in, towards the care of individuals, towards research, scientific studies. The medical uh, equipment has been uh, developed. More and more medicines are coming out through laboratories and manufacturing houses. You notice here again that even that of different types of uh, medications have, have, have continued to be developed as a result. Over the years of all of this spending, and have we found the cure? Have we found a cure to the hurting world? Have we found a cure to, to exactly what we are faced with through, uh, you know, through the diseases that has impacted us all around the world? So what is the result of all of that spending? We want to look at here again in the United States in 2020, in, April, in, in America, According to the CDC, look at this here. The death toll increases year after year. My friends, I am looking forward to seeing those statistics as well for 2021. And uh, look here again, 2020, heart disease killing over 690,000 people. Are you following this? This is heart disease. These are people that have just died from it, not those that currently have heart disease, right? Are you following? This is very serious. Cancer, COVID-19 hit the, the top chart list of the third killer in the United States in 2020. Accidents, stroke, chronic lower respiratory diseases, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, influenza pneumonia, and even nephritis. Notice that most of America's top killers are diseases. Diseases. My friends, the Bible predicted, our medical textbook predicted that disease, pestilence will be, will be on the rise, will be on the increase in the times in which we now live. These things should not take anyone by surprise. And that's why we are here to prepare for these things will become worse and worse with time. Also as well, we know that COVID-19 have affected affected many homes and many families. Many have died from this, but look at this here. According to the World Health Organization, 17.9 million people die each year. You know from what? That's right, it's from cardiovascular diseases. We know that COVID-19 the, from the time it started have impacted about 5.5 million people have died from this, but heart disease, Cardiovascular disease have killed 17.9 people. Now that is estimated to about 31% of all the deaths worldwide. 31% of all the deaths worldwide is contributed to what? That is right. It is contributed to that of cardiovascular diseases. Now, our medical textbook says this in Jeremiah 46 and verse 11. It says, go up into Gilead and do what? And take balm. That word balm here could also mean medicine, right? Or some sort of a remedy, right? All virgin, the daughter of Egypt, go into Gilead and take balm. We're going to be talking about Gilead later on. Later on and next, next Saturday, we're going to be talking about Gilead. Go into, go into Gilead and do what? Take balm, the virgin of Egypt. In vain thou shalt use many medicines, for thou shalt not 
be cured. We are headed into a time where even medicines will be difficult for people to be cured. Are you following this, my friends, where the only hope and the only source of healing is that of the great physician, the one that can heal uh, completely mentally, physically, and also spiritual healing as well. According to Dr. Dean Onish, medical doctor, he said this, about 75% of the 2.8 trillion in annual healthcare costs in the United States is from chronic diseases that could often be reversed or prevented by a healthy, altogether by a healthy lifestyle. Are you following this, my friends? About 75% of all the costs, right, of healthcare, most of it can be helped by, look at this here, often be reversed and even prevented altogether by a what? By a healthy lifestyle. So I want to encourage you today to live a healthy lifestyle. And that's why you're here. We're going to be learning how to live a healthy lifestyle, right? That's critical because we can learn how to prevent and even learn how to reverse the top killers in the United States. And if we put money and effort in helping people, as he stated, and I quote, if we put money and effort in helping people, right, make better food and exercise choices, and we could improve our health and reduce the cost of healthcare. The cost of healthcare. My friends, our topic today is the cost of healthcare. And so as we look here together, we're going to be looking at, we're going to explore in our medical textbook. And I pray that by God's grace that you brought this book with you. If you don't have one, call up somebody to bring one for you, right? If you don't have a medical textbook, you want to get one when you go out to the, uh, to the market. You want to get a textbook. Are you following this? Because we're going to be exploring this even today. In 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11, our medical text tells us this. Our health book tells us this. Now, all these things happen unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. In other words, the things that have been written in this text have been written for our ensample, has been written for our admonition. That we can look back and say, listen, this book, it, 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 it's basically present truth. Are you seeing this? It's basically the present truth for this time. They are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. And who the ends of the world have come to? It has come to us. My friends, if you don't believe it, we are living in the last generation of Earth's history. Are you seeing this? We are in the last moments, the last times. It's whom the ends of the world are come. So as we look here today, let us go back to the Word of God. Let's go back to the Bible today. And we're going to look at a scriptural text found in Numbers 21, verses 4 and 5. Turn there with me to Numbers 21, verses 4 and 5. And notice what our textbook says here. It says, and they journeyed. They journeyed from Mount Hor. They journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea. And the soul of the people, the soul, look over this here, to come past the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have he brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loafeth this light bread. Now, I wanted to pay attention to this for a moment, because who is journeying out of where? We realize that the children of Israel, ancient Israel, was journeying out of Egypt, out of captivity. Are you noticing this? Right before, after many plagues have been sent into Egypt, right? So many things was happening at that time in that, in, in that most powerful nation in the world at this point in history. God had called his people to journey out of Egypt, and he chose Moses to lead his people right out of this bondage into the wilderness so that they will be able to have access to freedom of liberties and worship 
to worship God. Now, as you look at a little bit further, notice very carefully that as they journeyed to come past the land of Edom, right, many of the people were discouraged. Now, these things are written for our example. So we can put ourselves in the shoes of the ancient Israelites and we can put ourselves in their shoes and see that, hey, listen, we sometimes could, could, could become discouraged because of the path or the way that God has chosen for you. We can sometimes become discouraged because God had chosen this path for ourselves. And therefore, my friends, I want to encourage you today. If there's somebody that is discouraged even now, I want you to be able to, uh, I want you to be able to be encouraged even now because God is the one that will encourage you and he will give you the strength to go through these times in which we, uh, in which you are now faced with, to go through the roadblocks that have come your way, to go through the uh, terrible pain and sickness and disease that you have been struggling with even right now. And notice what it says here again. It says, and the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loafeth this light bread. Our soul loafeth this light bread. Would did they have bread to eat? Yes, according to our textbook, yes, they did have bread to eat. Did they have? Uh, did they have uh, water to drink? Yes, they had water to drink. That is correct. Yes, they had water to drink. And as a result of this, they were committing falsehoods. They were committing falsehoods against God and against Moses, saying that they had no bread, no water, and they so loafeth this light bread. My friends, you know what that word loafeth means? Yes, that word loafeth means disgusted by. In other words, they were saying that they were disgusted by that light bread. You know what that word light here means? The word light here means insubstantial. That is correct. In other words, what they were saying is that they are disgusted by this insubstantial food that God has provided to them. My friends, where did that bread come from? It came from where? From heaven, manna fell from, that's right, manna fell from heaven. Are you following this? And as a result of this as well, the people said that this food, this food is not sufficient for them. It, it, they probably say today in our modern times, they will say something like this. Oh, it's lacking protein. Oh, it doesn't have iron. It, it, it doesn't have the essential nutrients that I need to sustain life. And that is exactly what these people were saying. They were disgusted by probably this plant-based diet that has been chosen for them. They so abhorreth this type of nutrition and food. And that was the best food that they needed for them to go through these terrible times in which they live. Now, as I go a little step further, was there a cost? Was there a cost to that dramatic event that is taking place and that is about to take place as well as we continue to read this very, very important story here. In a book called Medical Ministry on page 267, notice what this book reveals to us. The right that God had given and will continue to give on the food question is to be to his people today what the manna was to the children of Israel. What is the light that God has given on the food question? I want you to come back. I want you to come back because we're going to be looking at this in our, one of our nightly presentations. We're going to be looking at the food that God had provided for his people today. That is correct, my friends. The great physician, the great nutritionist had given us a foundational diet. That's correct. And it's based off of whole foods and plant-based. We're going to be looking at it. We're going to be going into more detail and depth into that in one of our nightly presentations. Now, let me go back here and I quote. It says, the man of fell, the man of fell from heaven and the people were told to gather it and prepare it to be eaten. So in the different countries of the world, light will be given. 
to the Lord's people and helpful suited to those countries will be prepared. And that is in a beautiful book called The Medical Ministry. Let us go back to Numbers 21 and verse 6. In Numbers 21 and verse 6 together, notice what it says here. Numbers 21 and verse 6. We read here that, and the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much of the people of Israel died. Wow. My friends, you notice that as a result of their disobedience, their murmuring, and their complaining, that fiery serpents were sent among the people at that point in time. And as fiery serpents were sent, you notice here as well, what was the result of this? They actually died in the wilderness. My friends, that's a very serious account that is taking place. And these things were written for our example. These things were written for our admonition. And you notice here that as we read, we see that much of the people of Israel, they actually died from the cause of a bite from a poisonous serpent. Now, let's look here a little bit further. And further, what was the cost of this? Was there a cost to healthcare? Then, was there a cost? Now, why were they called fiery serpents? One writer begins to reveal to us and expounded on this even more, right? A well-known American author that written many books on health and healing, and even that of even our medical textbook. And these books have been circulated all around the world. Millions of people have read them. And notice what this writer begins to state to us here in a book uh, called A Spirit of Prophecy, right? Notice what this book says here. It says, the murmurings of the children of Israel were unreasonable. What was the murmurings? Unreasonable. Is your murmurings today unreasonable? And notice here again, and the unreasonable always go to extremes. And they uttered falsehoods in saying that they had no bread, no water to drink. My friends, they always, they looked at the bad side of things rather than looking at the blessing that God had in store for them and God had provided for them. Are you looking at the blessings that God has in store for you tonight, today, right? Are you looking for this blessings? Are you following this? They have both been given them by a miracle of God's mercy to punish them for their ingratitude and complaining against God. The Lord permitted now fiery serpents to bite them. He permitted fiery serpents to bite them. And notice very carefully, they were called fiery because their bite produced painful inflammation and speedy death. Let's pause there for a moment. Their bite produced what? Painful inflammation and what else? Speedy death. Notice very carefully here that the bite of the serpent, this poisonous snake produced what is called an inflammatory condition. And with this inflammatory condition, the time frame for somebody to leave, live was very short. And therefore, it produced what is called a speedy death. People died. In other words, people died very quickly as a result from this painful inflammatory condition that has been produced by this fiery serpent. In other words, my friends, there was considered a, a, a breakout, an epidemic in the land in, at that point in time. Many of the people died as a result from this great plague that has infested the entire land and affected the people. And as a result of this, many of the people died from this painful inflammatory condition and even that of speedy death. Does this sound like anything today? My friends, does this sound like anything today? There is no new thing. One wise man said, there is no new thing under the sun. There's no new thing under the sun, my friends. We are just repeating the same thing that have gone throughout history, probably in just different ways. But look at this here. The children of Israel, the Israelites, up until this time, had been preserved from these serpents in the wilderness. 
by a continual miracle. For the wilderness for which they traveled was infested with poisonous serpents. With poisonous serpents. Notice again that they were provided water by a miracle. They were provided bread by a miracle. They were guided by God by a miracle. They were also, they were also protected against these serpents in the wilderness by another miracle. You are, you and I are alive today, my friends, by miracles. Because some of us should have been gone a long time ago. Some of us should have been dead a long time ago. But by the result, as a result of God's miraculous hand, he has saw fit to protect you today. He has saw fit to protect me today. So why then will I complain and murmur against God? Murmur and complain, oh, my pay, oh, this problem, oh, that problem, oh, this is, oh, I don't know. How is life going? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Are you complaining? Are you murmuring today? I want you to look at the bright side. You know, many scientific studies show us that about 75% of people's thoughts throughout the day are negative. Are negative. Are you seeing this? It's all negative. The first thing that they talk about is negative things. Because they live and breathe problems. Complaining and murmurings. I want you today to look at the good side of things. And even this afternoon as we come back to uh, Dr. Jackson, we'll be going over the mind and the importance of our mind. My friends, the mind is so critical for us. And you can see how the children of Israel had a mental breakdown in the course of this, in, the, in that time. They had a mental breakdown, right? They were clinically diagnosed with mental issues. Because they were complaining, they were murmuring. Are you seeing this against God and against Moses? And you realize that as a result of this, this has brought terrible plague and disease among them at that point in time. So let's go back to Numbers 21, verse 7 to 9. Numbers 21, verse 7 to 9. Follow me very closely here. Notice what it says. Therefore, the people came to Moses. And said, we have sinned. We have spoken against the Lord. Remember we looked at last night. Remember we looked at in our last presentation. We looked at how the worst pandemic to ever hit the planet was sin. And the people at this point in time, they had confessed that we have sinned. Are you seeing this? This deadly plague had struck the children, these people at that point in history, and had brought about disease and sickness upon themselves, and they confessed against God that we have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee, pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent. I want you to notice how the story begins to shift here. A great plague has struck the children of Israel at that point in history. Many were dying from an inflammatory condition that produced speedy death. They confessed their sins and they, 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 they repented from this uh, complaining and murmuring against God and against Moses. And God in his mercy, notice what it says that God in his mercy had provided now, is about to provide a health care plan. Notice that God is given a divine prescription. He's prescribing a specific remedy for the problems in which they now face. God is about to reveal to the children a health care plan. Let's see what that health care plan is. Let us see what that health care plan is. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and send it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. When he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made, and Moses made a serpent of brass, 
and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had been bitten, had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. When he beheld this serpent of brass, he what? He lived. My friends, what was the healthcare plan? The healthcare plan was to look and live. What they had to look upon? Look upon the serpent that was made with brass. Was that a free healthcare plan? Yes, it was. Did they have to pay anything for this? Not at all. And so all they had to do was to look and live. Now, let me ask you a question. Is that a reasonable and accessible healthcare plan? Yes, it was. It was a reasonable and accessible healthcare plan. And what was the cost of healthcare? What was the cost of this healthcare plan? Did it cost them anything? Did it cost them anything? Not at all. It cost them, really, it cost them nothing. All they had to do is to look and to live. But my friends, we know that anything that comes in this world doesn't come free at all. And so as we look here a little bit further, who paid that price for this healthcare plan? Because this bill had to be paid. That was a very expensive bill. And you notice that God provided a plan for his children. And all they must do was to look and live. To look and live. But did everyone do that? Let us read here together. Did everybody look and live? Another book begins to reveal to us this. It says, Here the Israelites were required to do something. They look. They must look upon the brazen serpent if they would live. So all they had to do, all they were required to do was to do what? To look upon the brazen serpents and they would live. But notice here again, this writer begins to reveal to us this. Many had died by the bite of the serpents. When Moses raised the serpent upon the pole, some had no faith that merely looking at that would heal them. And they died. Oh, what a sad time. At that point in history. What a sad time. They were provided a free healthcare plan. All they were required to do was to obey. Obey the instructions. To look and to live. But many had died. My friend, just imagine seeing people that you have come out of, the, of Egypt with dying on the ground all around you. And you see the evidence of death. You can smell the bodies of dead people rotting. But yet still, when Moses raised the serpent upon the pole, some had no faith. Can you imagine that thought? To see dead people around you, but yet still you don't believe that you should look when it costs you nothing to look and to live. Many had no faith that merely looking would heal them. And they died as a result. Those who had been bitten by the serpents might have delayed to look. They might have questioned how there could be efficacy in the brazen symbol. That's in a beautiful book called The Desire of Ages. If this book goes over the life of Jesus, it's a wonderful book that has been read by millions of people around the world. Those who had been bitten by the serpents might have delayed to look. They might have questioned how there could be efficacy in the brazen symbol. Oh, my friends, in other words, what does that mean for us today? Many of them question whether or not this healthcare plan was trustworthy, was legit, was realistic. 
could actually bring healing to me. Many question the healthcare plan that God had given. And throughout the course of this series, The Healing for a Hurting World, I will be revealing to you this healthcare plan. We will be going into detail in this healthcare plan. So I need you to come out night after night, except Mondays and Thursdays, as we go into more about this healthcare plan that God has given. They might have questioned how there could be efficacy in the brazen symbol. They might have demanded a scientific explanation. In other words, many of the people, even if they witness death all around them, and it costs nothing for this healthcare plan to be implemented, they demanded, they demanded a scientific explanation. They demanded a scientific explanation. In other words, what they were saying here is, Moses, <laughs> I know you're not any doctor, but uh, can you explain to me scientifically from your medical journals, from the research that has been conducted, why I should obey this healthcare, or why I should implement this healthcare plan and obey your instructions? Who are you? All Moses was doing was relating the information that have came from the office of the great physician. That have come from the office of the great physician. Are you, all, that's all he was doing. Just implementing the plan. But yet still, many of them, many of the people, demanded some sort of explanation scientifically. Now we are living in a society where there's scientific conflict. You have this well-known researcher and this well-known scientist and researcher conflict in the scientific understandings. Are you seeing this? World Health Organization, other private entities, CDC, all sorts of information floating around the place. Sometimes some of us are wondering, well, I don't know where to go to or who to believe anymore. Is there anything left that I could trust? What in the world can I trust anymore? They might have demanded some sort of scientific explanation. I want to suggest to you today, my friends, there's one book that has stand the test of ages. There is one healthcare plan that has stand the test of ages. And that healthcare plan comes from the Word of God. The Word of God. You will notice more and more, the only place that we can trust right now is God's Word. Because man's words will fail us. Man's words will fail us, but the only word that will stand forever is that of the words of God. And I continue to quote here, it says, but no explanation was given. No explanation was given. They must accept the word of God to them through Moses. They must accept the word of God to them through Moses. And to refuse to look was to perish. And to refuse to look was to perish. My friends, they were living in very critical times. A pandemic had struck in their land. The people had been provided with a healthcare plan. Many refused to follow that plan. And as a result of this, many died as a result. And God is revealing to us, his people in these times, he's revealing to the world today a healthcare plan. And we're going to be looking at this more and more as we explore this together. Was there a cost to healing? Was there a cost to this healthcare plan? We're going to read here together in John chapter 3 and verse 14. In John chapter 3 verse 14, because that symbol of the brazen serpent, right, of brass on a pole symbolized something significant. In John chapter 3 verses 14 to 16, are you there with me? And notice what it says here together. It says, 
And it says here in John 3, verses 14, and Moses, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So when many of the children of Israel rejected to look at that serpent of brass, do you know who they were rejected to look upon? My friends, it's becoming serious now. In other words, what they were saying is that I don't trust Jesus at all. I don't trust his health care plan. I don't trust his instructions. I am not even appreciative of the death in which we were wrought on the cross of Calvary for yourself and for me. Oh, my friends, we have to be careful when we deny God's instruction that he has given to us today as we as they refuse to look as many refuse to look and some look but as many had refused to look at the serpent of brass on a pole in the wilderness it was saying that they are refusing to look upon jesus my friends even as moses lifted even as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up. This symbol pointed to the Son of Man being lifted up. And all they must do was to look and live. And not only God provides temporal life, he also provides eternal life. When you look upon Jesus, my friends, it doesn't only provide temporal life here today, but also it provides eternal life in him. And Jesus today wants you to experience eternal life that is found in him even now. And that sermon of brass pointed to Jesus, my friends. Oh, the question begs an answer. Was there a cost to this healthcare plan? Does it cost to heal? Or did it cost to heal back then? It doesn't cost to heal now. Let's go to the word of God in Isaiah. Isaiah 53. Let's go there together. In Isaiah, Isaiah 53 and verses 3 to 5. Let us see what our healthcare textbook here reveals to us. In Revelation, in, sorry, Isaiah 53 verses 3 to 5. It tells us, he is despised, speaking about Jesus, he is despised. We're speaking about the great physician, the great physician, the great physician, Jesus Christ. Notice what the Bible, our medical textbook reveals about this doctor. It says here that he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He is despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. We saw in our previous presentation that Jesus provides a remedy for the sin virus. But not only does he provide a remedy for the sin virus, he literally provides a remedy for the hurting soul. Jesus provides healing for a hurting world. He is despised and rejected. A man of sorrows, he understands your soul, your deepest sorrows even now. Jesus knows it. 
Don't feel like you're alone now. Don't feel like you have no hope. He brings hope to everyone even now. He is bringing healing to a hurting world even now, my friends. Jesus wants to give you hope today. For with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we are healed. Just imagine this for a moment as Jesus is praying as he was in the garden of Gethsemane. He says, Father, let this cup pass from me. But he said, after a while of prayer and talking with his father, he said, nevertheless, Father, not my will, but your will be done. As Jesus was taken and he was on his way to that old rugged cross. As many spat on him, abused him, took it out whips, and beat him. Every stripe, whoosh, whoosh, every stripe, my friends, is recorded in heaven that with his stripes that we are healed. Jesus died today so that you can have a health care plan. Jesus died and rose again so that you can have an opportunity to be free from diabetes, to overcome cancer, to reduce your high blood pressure, to lose that extra weight. Jesus provides a health care plan for you, and with his stripes, you are healed. So the best thing I beg of asking you here today is, was there a cost to this healthcare plan? My friends, as you notice here again, the cost was the life of Jesus. Oh, the cost was the life of Jesus. He paid the cost of healthcare so that you could be free from sickness and disease today, even right now. Jesus had provided answer for every one of us. Whenever there's a problem, there's a remedy for it. Great hope that God has given to us. Christ feels now. Christ feels the woes of every sufferer. When evil spirit rend a human frame, Christ feels the curse. When fever is burning up the life currents through COVID-19, when fever is burning up the life currents through an infection or infectious disease, Christ feels, right? He feels the curse of disease and sickness upon his children. He feels the agony. He feels it. He knows it. He understands it. He emphasizes with us and what we go through, my friends. He doesn't only sympathize, but he truly understands our needs. He truly understands the sorrows and the agony that we face with. And so the Bible lets, reveals to us this in Hebrews 4 verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Jesus understands your high blood pressure, your arthritis. Jesus understands your back pain, your knee pain, your headaches, and the problems that we face within this life. Jesus wants to bring healing, my friends, healing to this hurting world. And he wants to bring healing to you. You will watch him wherever you are. If you feel that it's hopeless to you right now, remember, uh, I went to Russia to do uh, health meetings. And as we were in Russia, um, that was right before the shutdown happened. I spent about a few weeks out there, my wife and my son. And as we were in Russia there, we were doing some health lectures and classes. And people came from Tajikistan, Kajikistan, uh, Northern Asia, Eastern Europe to come to learn about health and healing. And as we were teaching more and more, we were teaching in, the, in, in Moscow. And outside of Moscow, I remember I went to visit a lady. I went to visit a lady that was in a room, bedridden, 
cannot move. They say that she came from Tajikistan, and she, when she came into Russia, as soon as she came about a, a, a week or so later, she became bedridden. Her arthritic conditions has become worse and worse to a point where she thought there is no more hope for her. So as I went into the room and my translator was with me, and as we were, as I was talking to this lady and asked her exactly what took place, exactly what happened to her, she said that she cannot walk anymore. She's not able to move or walk anymore. And she feels as if there's no hope for her and she will never make it back home. And I said to her, I said, lady, listen, I know that you think that there's no hope for you, but I want to tell you here today that there is a great physician. And there is hope for you. And I believe by God's grace, if you follow the plan in which we will reveal to you, which I will share with you, if you follow that plan, that you'll be walking very soon. And that lady began to cry as we prayed with her because she thought that there is no hope for her. For a moment, you could see in her eyes that she had gotten a glimmer of hope. And her heart begins to brighten up that, yes, one day I will walk. And we told her that, yes, trust in him, believe in him, and you will walk one day. So as a result of this, we gave instructions to her family members, told them what to do exactly for her condition. Uh, basically told them to use cinnamon and honey. And we've gotten cinnamon and honey. And uh, she took one part of cinnamon and one part of honey, combine that together with some warm water, make a tea out of this and drink this. Drink this every day. Apart from this as well, she had to do some uh, uh, lots of plant-based food and nutrition and so forth, uh, increase her water intake. And we, we kept in touch with her. And my friends, in a matter of three weeks, this lady was able to walk outside. I say, praise the great physician. Praise the great physician. I said, my friend, she was able to walk outside in three weeks in a matter of a month or two months. She was walking distances away and back. And she was able to go back home and get on a flight. My friends, praise the Lord. He worked in this woman's heart and mind. I gave her a glimmer of hope that one day she can walk. She followed the healthcare plan that was given to her and by obeying by faith, trusting in God by faith and believing that he can do all things for her. Guess what happened? She was able to walk again. My friend, she was able to walk again. Praise God for that. This lady was even able to go back to work. Are you hearing me today? Is somebody hearing me today? This lady was able to go back to work, my friends. A case once saw as hopeless. She was now hopeful again. That one day she will walk and she did. God is good. And so therefore Christ understands your agony. He knows what you're going through. Christ alone was able to bear the afflictions of many. In all the affliction, he was afflicted. He bore the disease in his own flesh, but he carried, he carried the sickness of others. He never bore disease in his own flesh, right? He never bore disease in his own flesh, but he carried the disease, the sickness of others. The pain of the sufferers thrilled through his whole being. The power of love was in all his healing. So what is the remedy for sin? We looked at this in our last presentation. But what is the remedy as well for sickness? My friends, there's a remedy for the sin, sick, soul. And that remedy is Jesus. That remedy is Jesus. Are you applying that remedy to your life today? Are you accepting Jesus as ever before in your hearts? Jesus wants to take you with him. Jesus wants to save us. Jesus wants to heal us from our sin sickness. Oh, my friends, what is the key to quit sin and to take care of our bodies? To understand how much it cost. It cost Jesus when we are healed from high blood pressure. It cost Jesus when we are healed from diabetes. 
It cost Jesus when you were healed from arthritis. He paid the bill for this health care plan. He paid the cost of health care. Jesus paid the cost of health care even right now. And he wants the best for you. There's a story about a man called Chart Arnold. Chart Arnold had a very deadly liver condition, liver disease. As a result of this, he needed a liver transplant. So therefore, family members and friends went to be able to get, to get themselves checked to see if they were compatible with Chad because Chad was on a list for a transplant, but he, well, they, gave him, they gave him a time to live. And therefore, he would have died before they would have gotten a transplant for him. So the family didn't want to entertain that risk. So therefore, his brother, Ryan, went to be able to see if, if he was compatible with his brother, Chad. And Ryan here be, became a donor to give a portion of his liver to his brother, Chad, that had a liver disease. As you see here again, these are the men and the wives. And they were family men. As they went into their, the surgical room, and you can see that they're hugging each other there. And who knows what they whisper in each other's ears, and they probably prayed together. They were also Christian men as well. You notice that uh, as they went into the surgery room, Ryan, the donor, decided to donate a portion of his liver to his brother, Chad. This is Ryan and his family, his uh, three children, his wife. And, but... As they begin to go through this even further here as well, something went terribly wrong after the surgery was done. The doctor said that everything was fine and everything looked good. And these men were, uh, you know, discharged and went back home to continue to heal. And when they went back home, an article came out in the news that said, liver transplant goes horribly wrong for two brothers. What could that be? My friends, Ryan, the donor of a portion of his liver, he was rushed back to the emergency room because he was undergoing what is called cardiac arrest. And therefore, as a result of this, Ryan died. Ryan died. Brother's transplant gift carries an unbearable cost. It costs the life of this brother to give a portion of his liver to his brother, Chad, who had a diseased liver. My friends, the family of Ryan is struggling to come to terms with his stunning death during a routine operation to donate a piece of his liver to his ailing brother, Chad Arnold. And you notice here again that Chad, he says that every time he sees the scar, he is remembered of his brother's sacrifice. He remembers the sacrifice of his brother and what his brother had done for him. His brother literally laid down his life so that he could have life. He could have an opportunity to live and he can have an opportunity for his liver to generate, but yet still his, his brother Ryan, who donated a portion of his liver, has died. And as we remember that story here as well, our minds go to another book in Maranatha, it says. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea, according to, as you continue to read Revelation chapter 21. The fire that consumes the wicked purifies the earth. Every trace of the curse of sin is swept away. One reminder alone remains. Our Redeemer will ever bear the marks of his crucifixion. Upon his wounded head, upon his side, his hands and feet are the only traces of the cruel work that this sin virus has wrought. That will be the only evidence throughout ages of time of what sin had wrought. My friends, only one reminder remains for us today. Only one reminder remains for us today. God has laid down his life. Jesus has laid down his life so that you could have life. 
Jesus have laid down his life so that you can have access to a healthcare plan. And Jesus, all he is requiring of you today is to look and to live. To obey his instructions by faith. To believe in him by faith. To walk with him by faith. To follow his guidance by faith. To obey his health care plan by faith, my friends. Jesus wants to give you a new heart. A new mind. He also wants to give you healing and restoration. Jesus wants to give you that even now. So my appeal at this time, my friends, is very simple. We have three decisions that I want you to make today as you consider in your heart what Jesus is doing even now. However, this message is spoken to you this afternoon or this morning. Jesus wants to bring healing to your life. Now, this is what I want you to do today. This is what I want you to do today. Wherever you are, if you are on Facebook or even on Zoom, simple decisions. Number one, and I want you to put one in the chat. I want you to put one in the chat, if that's you today. Put one in the chat. Number one, I need special prayer for healing. My friends, if that's you even now, just put one in the chat. I need special prayer for healing. Put one in the chat. I need special prayer for healing. Number two, I need prayer for my family and friends. Just put two in the chat if you need prayer for family and friends. Put two in the chat if you need prayer for family and friends. Whatever chat you're in, Zoom or Facebook or YouTube, just put two. I need special prayer for my friends and family. And number three, if you want to know this great physician more, if you have been impressed to know him deeper, and maybe you want somebody to help you or guide you in this process, we'll be happy to do that for you today. Put three in the chat if you want to know Jesus more. Just with three. Type the number three and send it to us. Because we want to be able to, uh, we have a team of people behind us. We have a team of people that want to pray with you. They want to point you and teach you and guide you through the process of how to know Jesus more. They want to pray for your family and friends as well. And they are waiting to do this just for you, my friends. For this is the healing for a hurting world. Jesus wants to bring healing to your life even now. And I want to appeal to you even today to give Jesus your heart. I know that some of us may be struggling with that. You said, well, you know what? It's not the time for this. I remember when I had to do it myself, I was struggling. Right? I remember one night and I've gone to meetings and learned about Jesus. And it, it, it never struck me so hard before. But I was struggling as a young man between, you know, whether or not I want to be able to just do my own thing or or to really give my heart to Jesus. One night, you know, I was uh, in bed and sleeping and I couldn't sleep well. I was troubled. I was tossing and turning. I began to sweat and I began to become exhausted in the morning when I woke up. I was so exhausted. I ran to my father because I was so troubled. I was so troubled. It's like a voice was speaking to me. I was 16 years old at the time. It's like the voice was speaking to me saying, Money, young man, give your life to me. Give your life to me. I ran to my father that morning. I said, Dad, Dad, what can I do to give my life to Jesus? Oh, he had spoken that night and he speaks to us in many different ways. And maybe he's speaking to you even now. And he wants you to be able to make that decision. You will lose nothing giving your heart to Jesus even now. You will lose nothing to just to know him more. I mean, people want to know things all the time. We live in an information age. People want to know more about how to do this, how to do that. They watch YouTube videos. They watch Facebook videos to learn how to do all kinds of stuff. But we just want to show you and teach how to know Jesus. Do you want to know him even right now? Just put three in the chat. We want to be able to consider you and to pray with you today. If you're unable to do this as well, what I want you to do is if you want to know Jesus more as well, and you're probably shy to put number three in the, uh, in the chat, that's, that's okay. There's a private line right here for you. A private line. Nobody will know that you're calling. 
Just call this number and text this number because there's somebody behind there that is waiting to hear from you. It's not public, it's just private. Somebody here is waiting to hear from you. They want you to call or text your decision to this number. Whether your decision is number one, two, or three, text that decision. Put the number in your phone, text number one, text number two, or text number three. It doesn't hurt at all. My friends, this healthcare plan is free for everyone. All he wants you to do today is to look and to live. To look and to live. And that number is 646 400 5720. 646-400-5720. We are waiting to hear from you. Our team of, uh, of health counselors is waiting to hear from you even now. So text that number or give a call and let them know your decision because they're waiting for you even now. My friends, Jesus is calling you home. He wants to even get closer to you as well. He wants you to get closer to him. And he also wants to heal you from diseases and sicknesses. At this time, let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and thankful for all you have done and for what you are doing in our lives even now. I ask that you will continue to be with each person here tonight. Each person here today. Because we are going through something in our life and we need your help even now. We need you to bring healing and restoration to our lives as we follow and obey your instructions that you've given to us. Help us to believe in you by faith. Help us to trust in you by faith. Help us, oh Lord, to draw even nearer to you. Thank you so much for our family and friends that have joined us here. I want to pray for each and every one of them, even now. I want to pray for their family and friends. Pray for those that have lost loved ones, that are grieving at this time. Pray for those, O oh Lord, that are going through or have been struck with COVID-19. We're going to ask of you that you give them comfort and peace. And also those as well that want to know Jesus more. We ask that you will help us to make that firm decision. I know that it may be a, a shy, that some of us may be shy, but give us the courage to say yes to you. Give us the courage to say, you know what? I, I'm open enough just to know more, just, just to give you a try. Lord, I, I want to know you more. Give us the courage today to press, to step forward and to make a decision to follow you. Thank you, Lord, so much for hearing our prayers today and for answering it according to thy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Monet. We have been truly blessed this morning. If you've been blessed, unmute yourself and, and, and let Dr. Monet know that you've been blessed. Go ahead, say amen. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. At this time, I want to remind you of our next session this afternoon. We have Dr. Thomas Jackson from Meet Ministries. It's on your screen. Share the link. Do not let your friends and loved ones go without getting in on this service this afternoon. And then we come back at, so this is happening at 5 p.m. At 2 p.m., we have a continuation of our Sabbath school program, um, extended Sabbath school Bible study. And then at 7 p.m. tonight, we will continue with Dr. Sinjist as he breaks the word. So get some rest. Take a break from off the screen because we can be fatigued when we have overload, right? So make sure, send out the link and see you back here at 2 p.m., 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. At this time, we'll go straight into our closing song, When We All Get to Heaven. Sister Debbie, I'm once ready. Sister Debbie is done, we will go straight into our benediction. Let us sing together hymn number 633, When We All Get to Heaven. 
Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the skies. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the tolls of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Looking forward to that day. Amen. Sister Ramos. And while I'm waiting on Sister Ramos, there is a anointing service happening at the Goshen Church. So if you want, feel free to stick around for that. There is a prayer, fasting, and anointing service happening right after this at the Goshen Church. Sister Ramos. Okay, okay, let's pray. Dear Grace of Heavenly Father, thank you. Once again, dear Lord, we're here together to say thank you, dear Lord. For, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Sabbath day. Thank you that we still have the freedom to meet together, dear Lord, to, to hear of your word, to read your word, and to study your word, dear Lord. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our health care provider, dear Lord. For, please help us to be obedient enough to obey the Lord and to look into Jesus, look up to Jesus as our healer and our provider for the day to day. Please be with us as we're going to go on a break now and bring us back here safely. This I say in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. 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 Our theme song. It's muted. Can't hear. One thing I know, you know is that Jesus is coming soon. Mm -hmm. Amen. No. You may say that boy from me born until now, or in 
regular English term. Since I was born. He's oh, yes, coming come soon. On. Come on. He's coming soon. Yes. He's coming soon. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want you to be rest assured that Jesus is indeed coming, coming soon. soon. And he's coming for me and he's coming for you. Trouble sometimes, sometimes I hear Killing men's hearts men with, with fear Freedom we all oh, dear Now is that stay Humble your heart your to God, God. Safe in his chasing rock Seek the way See the way Christ is the way My Jesus is coming soon, soon. Morning or night Morning or night or noon And many will, many will be there too Trumpets will sound, and, and all of the dead shall, shall rise. Righteous me in the sky. I'm going where going no one, one dies. Heavenward bound. Heavenward bound. But troubles will soon be o'er. Happy, happy forevermore. When we meet when on, we meet on that, that shore, free from all care. Rising up, rising in, up the in the sky, telling this telling world, this world goodbye. Homeward we then will we'll we'll fly. fly, glory to share. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night, morning or night or noon. Noon. and many will many many will be there too. Trumpets will sound, Trumpets will and, sound. and all of the dead shall rise. Righteous me in, in the sky, I'm going where no one no no dies. dies. Heavenward bound. My Jesus is Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night, morning or noon. And many will be many will be too. Trumpets will sound. My Jesus is a Jesus is going to morning or night or night or noon. And many will leave their doom. Trumpets will sound. And all of the dead shall shout. Righteous me, righteous me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and mute yourself and we can go straight into our meet and greet. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. And thank you to all those who took time to participate on the platform this morning. <laughs> 